But the upturn from the March low was interesting because in a quieter way, the other alternative market to the stock market as perceived by very large asset managers, uh, Ray Dalio, for example, uh, has said recently, don't be so concerned about the price of your stock, consider the value of your money, meaning the degradation of the money in it. He sounds like a gold bug. Well, guys like him who've been around a while, they see two alternatives out there. When you distrust the stock market, and a lot of them do, you know, on a gut experience level, this has been too long, too much up, too much Fed support, therefore overpricing. So when they shift, they shift into T-bonds, meaning they buy bonds, yields go down, which seems confusing to many investors now. How could yields be going down if, uh, you know, if, if commodity prices are rising, inflation shift. But they are. Notice the T-bonds have rallied off the March low, just like gold. So they both turned up on a near-term basis. But in the process of that upturn, in our weekend report, for example, we have some charts on this, they actually broke momentum downtrends that were clearly evident on the longer-term momentum charts that were in effect since that August high. In other words, as the price went down, so did the momentum readings. But that upturn in early May, in the mid-1700s, about 80 bucks off that March, that March low, broke momentum back out to the upside again, meaning, okay, the corrective process is over. We're now got a zigzag bias that's going to be back to the upside. So our near-term view is, yes, the turn we saw in May, despite the recent news headline sell-off, was a positive turn, and it's highly likely that that, ape, that March low was it. And now the issue is the zigzag process upside. You've got to look at the four major asset categories and view them as like icebergs that bump into each other, okay? They impact each other, some coincidentally, some inversely. And our view is that right now, the T-bonds and long-term government debt is viewed as a safe alternative to the stock market, just like gold is. And so it's not a coincidence that T-bonds made their price lows in March, their high in yields, recent high in yields. At the same time, gold bottomed. The gold had a stronger surge out of that hole but T-bonds are now catching up. And we think there's more to go in both on the upside now. Now, at some point later this year, the issue of interest rates will come back, meaning rates will rise. I'm talking free market rates, not what the Fed wants, okay? Like T-bonds, which is basically out of their control. It's too long-term for them to manipulate. Right now, I think T-bonds are going up, dropping in rates simply because asset managers are moving money to a safer place. Just caution. Uh, cash equivalent, if you want. They're certainly not buying T-bonds for the yields, okay? <laughs> uh, but you've got to watch the stock market because that's one that's not being discussed much. And it, it's it's obvious because if you're a bear or would-be bear in the stock market, you're numb. If you've tried to short the market, every time you short it, it goes down a percent, two, three, four percent. And next thing you know, it's back making a new marginal high and creeping along some more. So it just numbs you. Now, if you're a bull, you're totally numb to the other possibility. In other words, every time it dips, you know it's a buy, right? It, it's going to go forever, forever bolts. So either side of the equation, it's pretty much a given. The stock market's going to go up forever. Plus, the Fed, quote, has their back. Well, history shows that when the Fed has your back, fine. If the investor crowd prefers the same category that the Fed does. So at the, the 2009 low, the S&P was in the 600s. Two, a year and a half earlier, it had been in the 1500s. So investors plowed money back into the stock market, and they were right because it was vastly oversold. And so Fed policy at that point did work because it was a cheap asset category. So investor flow went where the Fed wanted it to go, into the stock market. Now it's persisted for a dozen years. And lately they put you know the, the pedal to the floor uh, in terms of monetary growth. There's a point at which in any bull market, whether it's the 2000 top, the 2007 top, where the Fed policy doesn't matter anymore. The investor says, I've had enough. So despite Fed support during the 2007-2009 bear market and from the 2000 to 2002 bear market low, despite Fed policy trying to prevent that, it didn't work. And investors need to remember that. I think we're at the same point now, except more dramatic, because you can see the S&P chart is just odd. NASDAQ is even worse on the upside. If they turn down, they will turn down in a more serious percentage way over the longer haul than they did then. Uh, but right now, the issue is to break the stock market, at least some credible breakage that we can define. And we've defined some in the weekend report that are likely to be triggered 
early on in this new quarter, which starts on Thursday. The point being that that would be the surprise that helps gold the most, because think about it, any fear of Fed taper in 2022 or whatever is going to go out the window if that asset category becomes a psychological risk factor for the Fed and for the investment public and for the average American who, you know, it's not just the one percenters in the stock market. There's a lot of average guys who work in a factory, been there for 20 years and know that when the stock market goes down, they could get laid off. And so it will affect their spending habits. And the Fed knows this. So they must defend the stock market. So if the stock market turns down, that means it's all green for gold. Uh, and another variable is the dollar. You know, right now you get cut some upticks in the dollar for the last month or two. But if you stand back and look at a dollar index chart, just a price chart. You can go to your quote screen and type it in. Go back uh, to 2009, back 10, 12 years. You'll see that there were two major peaks around 89 on the price chart of dollar index. We're talking about cash index. We broke through that in 2015, went up to 103. Then we went into a trading range from actually from 2015 through the present, where the range has been of 12% range from top to bottom, 12%. That's it. That's how narrow it's been for six years now. The bottom end of that range is roughly around 89, which is where? On top of the two highs that occurred back in 2009, 2010, I think it was. So we made a low in 2017, around 89 area, made a low early this year in the 89s. We recently revisited into the 89s. Right now we're 91 and change. If you slip there, it's our view right now, if you slip the dollar index down, down to 90, not even 89, but just back down to 90, that it's not going to hold this time. The price guys are finally going to give up. Long-term momentum on the dollar turned down in 2017 at a price of 99. And it's been laying in a range mostly below that level since, trying to hold this price level. So here's another asset category that's extremely quiet, dollar and the euro, which is 57% of the dollar. Very narrow range for six years. Narrow is probably in dollar index history in terms of percentage. If that dollar wakes up, meaning weight goes down, you go back down to 90 again, we think it's going to drop sharply into the 80s. Well, that's going to cause a whole nother iceberg to start moving. What do you think that's going to do for commodities and gold? Okay. It's going to... Basically, it's going to have every argument you want to have. It's going to have in its favor. But two of those arguments right now aren't in the debate scheme. See, most people are sleepy about the dollar. They think, oh, it's holding support. It's up to, see, well, big deal, a percent and a half off the recent lows. Uh, and, and when you look at the S&P, everybody's asleep on that issue as well. So it's those two issues, those two quiet ones, you can call them, that when they wake up, watch out, because they're going to have massive wave impact on one any Fed policy changes, which aren't going to occur if the stock market becomes you know, a, a victim and a factor, uh, in which case gold has basically got green lights. So I, I think that there's a lot of false interpretation about Fed policy right now and its likely direction. I don't think it's going to change because two big factors are going to affect it. One, especially the stock market.